Warning, the following video is raw and unscripted. Ranting and rambling may occur. Viewer discretion is advised. Don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you. You should thank your mom. <laughs> like that that was totally legendary, you know? Like you couldn't choose but he, like you were close to the 80s and then you had a proper haircut, haircut, you know? Like imagine if you were that close to the 80s and you never had a yeah. proper haircut for that. You know? I, I mean, I still was a cute kid. You know, like I I I think I rocked it pretty decently in my opinion. <laughs> I'm like it could have been worse. I've seen worse. But I remember back when I bought my first CD, I, I had to save up my allowance, you know, and uh, my first CD was Lincoln Park, um, their first one, Hybrid Theory. All right. That got me into like that new metal kind of rock where it meets rap. It just was like so unique at the time. Like, and looking back at it now, like, you know, the guitar riffs and stuff weren't like super crazy or anything. And it wasn't like, but, you know, they had like the scratching and like the, the cool techno and rap going in it and it's just like iconic i mean and chester bennington yeah exactly uh and chester is just like rest in peace i mean he was a phenomenal vocalist i mean he had quite a range yeah. um yeah absolutely and then my absolutely. first like <laughs> oh go ahead i i will no, I was just say I was just gonna say that I was never like I, trying to remember back then. I was never into the new metal thing because I was like, no, I'm I'm more like an Iron Maiden guy and power metal and stuff. Like I'm not I'm not like in this kind of new metal stuff, you know? Yeah. Like this is too much modern to me, you know. But now, not now, but like a few already a few years uh, back, like. When we look back to that time, there's a lot of iconic things, as you said, like, especially, as you said, like, uh, Chester is a fucking awesome vocalist, you know, like, he, he's, yeah. he was a really, really good singer. Like, his voice is so unique and powerful, and I, I didn't appreciate it back then, but uh, now I know. <laughs> for sure. It's fantastic. It was fantastic. <sighs> And, and for me too, like growing up, like I grew up with like the, the classic rock and metal and stuff. Cause you know, my mom, my mom was only 19 when she had me. Um, and she played that a lot around the house. So, you know, I had Toto, I had Foreigner, I had the Scorpions. I had like all these like, like eighties and like all that classical rock going on. And um, it, I still have that stuff on my playlist too. I really enjoy, you know, all that kind of stuff. And even, you know, like Metallica, um, Mastodon. I like have like all, if you look at my playlist, it's very broad. Like you'll get everything from, all right. from like 90s to 80s to pop to rock, metal, acoustic. I'm all over the map. So, <laughs> so you, but then you make like, a, you, you made a playlist with everything. You didn't, you didn't uh, create like separate playlists for your stuff. No, it's all straight just in one playlist. It's You'll, all there. All right. Yeah. It keeps it interesting for sure. Like bouncing back and forth between genres. So, um, but yeah, that's awesome. Those CDs you got were great. Michael Jackson, I, God, rest in peace to him too. He was a phenomenal musician, like all the way up till the end. So, um, and Dirty Diana's a fantastic song. Uh, Smooth Criminal was my favorite. Um, yeah. But definitely Dirty Diana is a close second for sure. That's That was an awesome song. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I guess in, in the CD, in the album, they are like in, in the sequence, right? It's like Dirty Diana, track number nine, and Smooth Criminal, track number 10, or something like that. Or like eight, nine. I, if I, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not <laughs> sure, but... As I can, if I try to remember now, I, I guess it was like in sequence. So like I was going back to Dirty Diana. Okay, leave it to Smooth Criminal. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, my memory is, is telling me that. <laughs> yeah, and 
um i love the music video for smooth criminal like that whole like gangster kind of like you know and like the dance off kind of thing and like the leaning like and like on the back up so it was just so iconic yeah. so awesome he he was great <laughs> um Okay, so we'll segue into the next uh, question. And I, I think I kind of know because you said like your favorite um, horror movie character is Jason. So I was going to ask, what, what is your favorite horror movie? Um, I, I believe The Exorcist, actually. Oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's... Um, I mean, from the eighties and like um, you know, if you if you if we're talking about slasher franchise, then of course Friday the Thirteenth it's my favorite, you know. But I guess my favorite horror movie from all time is The Exorcist. I think it's so iconic and so it was so groundbreaking back then, you know, and so yeah. you know like challenging with uh, you know what I mean. Oh yeah, definitely. Being like. It was something people ha had never seen before and so it was um and it's you know so how can i say that um it's not violent but it's like so horrible you know to see that stuff happening you know and, yeah um so i guess it's uh ex the exorcist is my favorite nice i actually uh that's funny that you say that i i just rewatched that um I think it was Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. I just rewatched that movie. It had been so long right. since I'd seen The Exorcist, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely like a I iconic classic. It you and it broke new ground for sure. It's just kind of like how we when I was on that podcast, we talked about Psycho and you know like how it you know some of the stuff doesn't really hold up today, but it's so such a classic and it's such a segue into like horror you know like these movies help perpetuate and make horror what it is today um and you know for me my favorite horror film is scream um all right from 1996 you know because at that time horror was kind of on the decline and you know it, it kind of needed something to like revamp it and kind of bring it into like the new times that we were in. And that definitely was one that did it, even though it was like, had these elements of like comedy and a little bit of tropes and like referential. And it was kind of meta at the time. Like it, it reinvented the slasher and like the horror craze. And I know I've said this quite a bit on some of my videos, but like that movie freaked people out and skyrocketed purchases for uh, caller IDs. Cause you know, <laughs> You know, you never knew who was calling back then. And then all of a sudden you, know, you get a creepy call like that. You're like, you want to know. What a time to be alive, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, For sure. I, I, I remember when, when the movies came out and like um, Scream is actually very special to me as well. Because um, like, um, I guess it was the first movie I went to the, to the movie store and rented. Like I went all by myself and rented Scream 1 and Scream 2. It, uh, the second had just came out back then. And before that, like, I was, like, totally terrified by, by horror movies. Like, I couldn't watch horror movies. Like, I was really um, scared of, of horror movies, you know? Like, and, and it's interesting because I didn't have it when I was uh, a bit younger than that, you know, like uh, when I was like very, very small kid, I, I used to watch like Friday the 13th and Child's Play and I didn't have a problem with that. It was fine, you know. Yeah. Uh, I remember like even my grandmother was watching uh, Child's Play with me once and it was, it was perfectly fine. But then after that, for some reason, I got totally scared about uh, horror movies. And one of the reasons I guess it was even The Exorcist because I've seen like, uh, there was like a documentary or like a short uh, documentary about the movie in the news in Brazil. And it was so scary and it was saying, oh, but this, this movie was like uh, based on a true story. Mm -hmm. And then they were, they were showing some scenes. I was like, oh, this is real, man, come on. What if it, what if it happens to me? What if, I, 
what if I'm possessed, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> I will go to sleep and then like, I will be possessed, you know, it's over. Like, and then I, I got completely scared um, to watch horror movies, you know? Yeah. For some, and then it was a low, it was like a time in my life in my, um, when I was young that I, when I was a kid that I, I couldn't watch horror movies, but then uh, my mom, I start, uh, she, she went back to work. She wasn't working for a few years uh, to take care of me and my brother. And then she started to work again. And then I was staying alone at home in the <laughs> afternoons. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to watch that shit, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> to watch some shit, <laughs> any shit, you know, I'm going to try yeah. to, to watch something. And then I went to the video store and then I rented Scream. And it's like, in in, um, in Portuguese in Brazil, it's not called. It's, if you translate the name of the movie, it's not like Scream. It's like Panic. Oh, so so, in my opinion, it sounds even more uh, terrifying. You know, <laughs> like and then, like I I rented the two of them, and I was like, I'm gonna watch the. I'm not going to stop. Like, I'm not going to stop the movie. I'm going to watch from, from beginning to the end. And, and then I watched the two in, in one afternoon. It was pure adrenaline, you know, and then I loved the two movies. Yeah. And Scream is very special to me because of that. It was like my, you know, my way back to the horror world. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then I... Then I took like I guess two more years to you know be brave enough to watch uh, The Exorcist because I still had that in my mind you know from the documentary yeah you know like oh maybe maybe I will be possessed you know but but then I was already watching other horror movies and then I watched uh, The Exorcist from beginning to end the director's version you know yeah it was just coming out back then. So there were new scenes and stuff, and it was fantastic. And, and then, like, never stopped watching horror. Yeah, Scenes, scream. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, yeah, there's nothing scarier than something that can really happen. And you know, uh, when they wrote Scream, he was watching the news when he was writing the screenplay for that, and it was actually based on some college killings that was going on at the time. And I think it was really? in Florida. Uh, the Gainesville mm -hmm. Ripper, he was like uh, mutilating people and then putting their bodies in wow. positions. Yeah. So that kind of fueled him to write Scream, which is terrifying. And it, it, there's just ter something terrifying because these people are like human, you know, they're, they're people like you and me walking around acting normal and then killing people. And so it's just so real. And that's what I think elevates these kind of horror movies to a new level is so, it's plausible. It's something that can happen for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And when there's something iconic, as you said, like, for example, the, the phone called, you know, yeah. and, um, and the voice, you know, so yeah. <laughs> and, and then that, that keeps in your mind. I remember like when I was a kid before I, I got really scared about uh, horror movies i watched a movie and i can't remember which movie what which movie was it that um like someone was going to sleep yeah i don't remember if it was like a kid or something and when they were laying their heads on the on the pillow there were voices inside the pillow oh. and like i don't know i don't i can't re because i was so young i can't remember if it was like uh passage to another world or something like that if it were if it was demons or something but there was the voices inside the pillow and I was totally scared of that too like come on I'm gonna go to sleep now I'm gonna put my head in the pillow so <laughs> but I, I cannot I cannot let my ear touch the the pillow you know I have to, <laughs> to lay down like this and and you know stare at the roof so yeah. <laughs> I will not hear any voices something like that so definitely like but but that is much more like um paranormal stuff but then with scream it's like a fucking phone call what if the phone rings you know yeah you know you get a call you're like hello chris what's your favorite <laughs> movie? 
I'm gonna cut you from the inside out. You know, like <laughs> some, some creepy ass shit going on. So, um, yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Um, uh, so, okay, here's here's a, here's one that's more towards music again. Um, if you were to play like the ultimate concert, uh, what bands would you want to play with live? Any genre. Yeah, it could yes. be. It could be any genre. Like, if you were to put together a show with some of like the your favorite people that you would want to play with, uh, what would that concert be? <laughs> Only one artist, or like a festival? Can I talk? To uh, maybe it could be. Yeah, it could. Be, it could be. It could be like multiple. Like you know, maybe like three or four bands that you would really want to play with. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess um, Kiss. Nice. <laughs> because they have a fantastic show, Iron Maiden. Hmm. Motley Crew. Yeah, that would be it. But then, like Midnight Danger, it's kind of different from the band. But whatever. Yeah. No. It. That would be a great show. I'd go see that show in a heartbeat. Like. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> like even if even if it wasn't uh, if it if I wasn't in the band, like <laughs> I would yeah. definitely go and see the festival. You know. No, that that that's a great show. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna include one more, and, okay. and maybe that it could be only him, actually, <laughs> because I, I think I think he's uh like he's a good inspiration to Midnight Danger. I guess Alice Cooper. That you know, I was actually so, had a, I had a question coming up about Alice Cooper on this interview. All right. I know you did that cover of uh, He's Back, The Man Behind the Mask from Friday the 13th. I think it was part six. And yeah. I thought that was a that was a great cover of that song. Like, I enjoyed that just as much as I enjoyed the original. Like, Alice Cooper is right. fantastic. Um, even his newer stuff. Like, I enjoyed, like, Brutal Planet that came out more recently than his his older stuff. Like, I love him. I he's he's awesome and I've seen him like in some horror movies like some b-rated horror movies he like pops up I'm like holy shit it's Alice Cooper like he's so iconic I, but yeah I agree with that choice too a hundred percent if if we try to you know to match to have a connection between the bands maybe like um Midnight Danger, Misfits, and Alice Cooper, because we have like skeletons in stage and stuff like that, you know, so yeah. <laughs> it would be a good horror show, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, to make it interesting too, I'll, I'll throw in my little bit right here. I, I would love to see, well, Alice Cooper would be one of my choices because I already had like some preset like concert ideas in my head. Uh, Alice Cooper, Rob Zombie, um i mean as weird as he can be sometimes i really like marilyn manson and all right and and you that i think that would be fun i think that'd be a fun show totally <laughs> totally I, like energy... I would totally do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah energy would be through the roof i feel like you guys i mean just from seeing your stuff like your clips and your photos and stuff like i feel like you would have like a awesome stage presence too and like the lights and like you know just everything i think all those all the musicians would collaborate so well together very theatrical <laughs> awesome sounds like an awesome festival too like haven't thought about them but uh, indeed like I, I i like rob zombie and i like Marilyn manson too so that sounds sounds really nice yeah <laughs> for sure um okay uh Sorry, I have all these questions written down just so I didn't forget them. Um, where has been your favorite place to perform? Um, <laughs> I get. Oh, I have an answer for that. I <laughs> guess it was um, in Scotland. Oh, nice. Uh, when we when I played there with uh, but, but London was nice too you know like the because I, I had this uh, uh, UK tour with uh, Dance with the Dead and Le Brock nice okay actually Le Brock played two two of the three shows so it was only three shows uh, but the the gig we played in Scotland was legendary it was like sold out and people were 
so crazy about it, you know, and um, and London was fantastic too. The thing with the tour is that I had just uh, released Malignant Force. And then I had this first show booked in uh, Paris with uh, Dance with the Dead. And then there was also Daniel Deluxe and Confrontational. Um, yeah, and a couple of other artists. So I had this show booked uh, with them in, uh, in Paris. But then there was a problem with the visa from Daniel Deluxe. I don't know if you know his music, if you like his work. It's really good too, like really nice uh, dark scene. And he was actually making the whole tour with Dance with the Dead. They, they were making like uh, an UK tour and an European tour. And Daniel Deluxe was like the, the official support act, but he had a problem with his visa because he's uh, Russian and he lives in Europe. But then there was a problem with his visa for the UK. And like in the last minute, my booking agent put me in that tour, replacing Daniel Deluxe. But wow. it was like really, it was really in the last minute that I joined the tour, the UK tour. Um, so when I played in London, like they didn't have like so much time to announce like oh it's not daniel deluxe it's uh, midnight danger and some people didn't know about that so the show was fantastic because it was also sold out there was a lot of people there but uh because they didn't have time to announce it was kind of weird some people as i said didn't know there was even a guy that thought i was daniel deluxe because he didn't know also he also didn't know daniel he he was there for uh dance with the dead so like even daniel deluxe was, was going to be new to him but uh then the gig in scotland was like two days after that and but they made a proper announcement you know like on facebook and everything like oh daniel deluxe is not coming but we have a replacement that is midnight danger and then people were already prepared for that so when I played the show, it was not something weird to people there. It was announced. It was like uh, in the in the entrance of the the venue. They they had it written there, you know, like uh, tonight, dance with the dead, midnight danger, blah blah. So, and then the audience was completely insane. It was it was really really nice. It was a fucking nice show. So Scotland, I guess. But I mean. The other show, there are other shows that I played that were uh, super nice as well, you know, like Sweden in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the last show I played in Stockholm was fantastic. Uh, the first show I played in Stockholm was awesome as well. It was also with Dance with the Dead. And that was my first one, my first show with Midnight Danger. And um, I didn't even have a release um, Malignant Force back then. So I only had like demos and not demos, like singles and a couple of compilations and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that, I didn't know if people would know my music and know my name, my work. Maybe they, I know how Sweden is. Sometimes it's like uh, you have a show and then you have the support act. They just come later for the, the main, you know, the main bands. They, they don't see the support act, you know. But then the, the how it was another sold out show and everyone was inside for the support act as well, you know, to see Midnight Danger and then it was fantastic. But yeah. the, the gig in Scotland was so much bigger and Malignant Force was already out. So there was uh, more people that knew the work and, and stuff. It was, it was fucking great. That sounds awesome. I mean, I've always wanted to kind of go to Scotland and Ireland and, you know, because... Um, I'm Scottish and Irish on both my mom and my dad's side. Um, right. And that's just always been like a, like a dream vacation, like a place to go for me would be both Scotland and Ireland and Germany as well. Um, those have been like my top three places I really want to go. Um, but that sounds like it would be amazing to go see you guys play and see like dance with the dead and Scotland. That sounds like the perfect show to me. <laughs> that would have been awesome to see. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was great. The venue was super cool and Dance with the Dead is uh, fantastic. So I guess we played like six or seven shows together already. And uh, it's always a pleasure to see the guys and, and you know, to play together because uh, I guess we share a lot of the same audience, you know, and yeah, so so it, it's pretty good. It, it, it's very good.
to to play with them and you know to be with our fans and with them it's awesome yeah well for sure um and you know with you playing with them a lot and you listening to them like you know what would be three of your top favorite songs from dance with the dead if you ha- if you had to, if you had to pick i know it's hard to pick sometimes because like for me i can hardly like pick a list because i'm like oh god i love all these songs how do i like put it into a top three you know but uh yeah if you, but if you were to pick three what would be three of your favorite from from dance with the dead um trash i guess it's uh one of my favorites from out of body um i guess near dark from from the same album um what what's the name of oh come on what's the name of the song from the the send the signal ep the first song oh i can uh, i can check <laughs> i was gonna say i love a lot of those songs on the album but i don't i don't know the track list how it goes uh, <laughs> it's um poison poison oh yeah yeah poison it's uh the, the they have an intro on the ep and the signal but then the first song and after the intro is uh poison nice but i like i really like um because they have like an alternate alternate version of poison that is more metal more guitars and even i guess they even played that one live but i like the one more the one from from the ep nice so yeah i guess i guess those three songs like i like i like so many of them maybe if i start remembering like checking all of the albums oh this one oh that one too and that one too but i guess trash near dark and poison are my top three nice uh for me i'd have to say midnight never end oh sorry it's uh treasure i i just pronounced uh <laughs> just made a com- i was just confused here but it's not trash oh. it's treasure nice um for me, it'd be Midnight Never Ends, um, Stoic, and Cobra. <laughs> All right. Cobra is fucking nice, too. Yeah. And there's like, God, like I said, it's hard to come up with, like, I know it's really hard to, like, put them in a list because, like, I love them all in different ways and they're all fantastic. Just like with your music. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to just pick them. So... What, what would be your top three Meet My Danger songs? Um, Stranger Days. Um, Behind the Mirror. And, um, oh gosh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I've got to like think. Um, Maniac. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I had to like really think about that because I'm like, ah, oh, there's so many I want to say, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it was it's what I was thinking with with this with that. It's like even hard to to choose uh, to, to pick a song, and then like <laughs> all of the names start coming to to your mind, and then like, oh, which one? Oh, this one, that one too. But yeah, but cool, man. Nice, nice. I also really I enjoy. enjoy- Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's lagging a little bit. So I didn't know. No, it's all right. <laughs> uh, Killing for Kicks. All right. Yeah, I think Killing for Kicks is a pretty good song. And uh, it's not on any album uh, from my uh, discography. It's from uh, In Search of Darkness. Yep. And then <laughs> <That's right>. um, <laughs> for some reason, it's actually in the movie. If you watch the movie, the, the song is there. Uh, but it didn't have so much exposure, I guess, because of course, since it's in the movie, like uh, for some people, it's kind of it's kind of hard to find, you know. Like when they when they go to listen to my my albums, then it's not there. You have to go to In Search of Darkness, and then and then you yeah. see it. And I never played a live show after that one came out, but I think it's a song that is going to work really nice on live shows. Oh and yeah, then I think it's it's going to get more popular i really like uh the, the melodies in that one too it's kind of creepy yeah that's a, yeah that's a really good song um yeah i have a lot of people that like you know i work with and that i have on my instagram i've i've been kind of pushing them your way like i'm like 
you know, cause I've, I've posted some of your stuff and people hit me up and they're like, Hey, you know, what's, what's this music, you know? And I'm like, you know, midnight danger, you should check them out. They're kind of like, you know, they have some like eighties feel to it. Some like synth, like really dark sounding kind of horror themed and, and a lot of the music. So like, they're like, Oh, that sounds awesome. Like, and I've even turned on people to music that have never listened to synth wave before. And you're the first person. All right. heard. So, um, a lot of my friends, have like rave reviews about you too they were like oh my god this is amazing so um keep doing what you're doing it's awesome man <laughs> that, that's freaking awesome i totally appreciate it man yeah of Super course nice to hear that yeah of course i want i want you to get as much uh much exposure as possible like that's definitely another reason i wanted to be on here is like i want people to get to know you and in, in your music and because like it's a big staple in my playlist. Like you got, or you and dance with the dead are like make up a majority of like my, my awesome playlist. So um, you guys have been like an inspiration to me. I, I really wish I could do synth wave. I'm, I'm kind of doing like a, a progressive alternate rock, alternative rock, but I wish I could dive into the world of synth wave because it's, it's just such a great style of music. Awesome, man. Yeah, but but you know, like if you get like a MIDI controller, and like a, you probably have like a, a sound card, you know, an audio interface or something like that, then you maybe start like doing it for fun, you know, like yeah. just, just try to see how how the scene sounds. That that's very interesting. You start to to just play with it. You you don't even have to think about like making a song or something. Just just start playing with that and feeling the sound. And then you will see that, uh, you know, like the sounds of, of some plugins are so big and so there's so much atmosphere in them that you start to get inspiration automatically, you know? It, yeah. I don't know, uh, maybe maybe you should try, man. Yeah, for sure. I, I probably will. I'll probably like get some of that stuff and just start tinkering around because I just love listening into it so much that I'd love to see how I could do messing around and making some stuff, you know, and see where it goes. <laughs> so. Yeah, awesome. It's exactly the way I started, you know. For sure. That, and that's, that's really inspirational because, you know, to think that, you know, you started out with a keyboard at, or at seven years old, you know, you said you, you did like a year of lessons and then you started picking up the guitar and listening to Dance with the Dead and kind of like, you're like, I, you know, this is something that I'm interested in. I want to, you know, mess around with it. It's inspirational to see that and know that like, I'm kind of in that boat, you know, like I grew up, I played a little bit of piano, a little bit of guitar, like acoustic. And, you know, I'm the vocalist in my band, but like, um, I like to like tinker around with instruments. So like, I feel like I'm kind of a little later in life, but I'm kind of like on that, I could be on that same path of, you know, discovering you know my my niche in music and stuff because uh i've always been a big metal head and this rock band has been kind of a change for me because i was in a really heavy band and now i'm doing like a lot of singing more than like growling or screaming or like All more right. heavy stuff so um i think there's a swedish pop metal band that i like uh too that i think they're from sweden um uh dead by april I don't know if you ever heard of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes, I was like, yeah. I the band. Okay, yeah, I really like their Pretty stuff. Nice music, for sure. Uh, I, like, I don't know the the name of the albums or the songs, but I, I definitely uh, have listened to them, and like, I remember I liked the stuff I listened. To, you know, so it's a yeah. nice band, <laughs> for sure. So, um, I just got a few more questions. That's then we'll be done with the questions finally. I know. I had so many. All of them. right. It's just you don't get opportunities. No problem, man. <laughs> you don't have very many opportunities like this. I mean, um, I didn't know that this was going to be possible. I didn't know that that you'd be so receptive and like you know willing to do this with me. So when you said yes to that, I was like super shocked. I'm like, oh my god, this is like this is like a huge thing for me. So. <laughs> Oh, come but it, it's super fun, man. I like talking about, uh, you know, everything we've been talking about here, you know, like movies and music and inspiration and 80s. Like, it's fucking awesome. It's my pleasure, you know, so. 
and they were so nice like uh you know promoting and, and sharing and like with the reaction videos too it was so nice so it's my pleasure man awesome i'm it, it's been a pleasure for me as well um so i guess we kind of already talked about i was gonna you know uh wanted to give you a chance to kind of you know plug your new album a little bit you know uh, share that out there with all the listeners and any like other thoughts that you had on the album or things that you want people to know about nights at Lake Milson. Um, yeah. Yeah. Actually like um, everything about that album, like started to evolve and escalate, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, because I had uh, when I released, chapter two endless nightmare in august 2020 uh just before the release date i came up with the idea of having comics and the reason for that is because um like when i was working in endless nightmare and um when i when we i had the idea for the cover and then uh mark he he, he made like the the artwork and it was it was so nice Oh fuck! I just <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and and then I started to see a connection between the two works. You know, I didn't feel like uh, chapter two was something like completely new, like from from scratch. You just it, I, I had the feeling that that was like a sequel to *Malignant Force*. Like I, I had the same feeling, you know, at, in that album. And I thought it was like, oh, this is this is a sequel. Like I'm doing the same kind of stuff. Oh, oh, and like I really like Malignant Force, I don't want that to end. So yeah. chapter two is a sequel. Like they will always be connected, you know. And then I started to have uh, ideas for like a comic. Uh, I mean, for like a story connecting the two albums, you know. Because when you look um, at the cover of Malignant Force, then you you see that scene in the alley, and the girl is frightened, and then there's like the the back cover there is like the, the the killer attacking her and i am in the back cover as well like watching that scene and then chapter two is like me zombified yeah. chasing a girl you know so um and then i was like yeah, there is a connection and i started to have ideas that would connect those two uh events you know like from from those covers and uh, it turns out that in my head when the ideas uh, came like when the ideas started uh, coming, mm -hmm. then like a lot of things happened and the final scene from Malignant Force is the album cover. Then chapter two, there's a lot of things happening. And mm -hmm. then the final scene is the cover of chapter two. So like there is a story that leads to the scene in Malignant Force. And then there's another story that leads to the scene in chapter two. And I had those ideas when I was, uh, even before the release of chapter two. And then I started to like, okay, maybe I cannot make a movie. Like I don't have a uh, budget for that. You know, like, I cannot <laughs> afford making a movie or TV series and, and stuff, you know, but, and I cannot make music videos for every song to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So I thought about uh, comics, you know, like a graphic novel or, or something like that. And then I started to, to try to find artists to do that and when i found this guy who is um uh, he's uh, his name is Filippi Protsky. he he's been working uh with a lot of people in in, in the synth wave scene already like making posters and album covers and like so he, he he gets a lot of the feelings from synth wave and dark scenes and horror scenes and he knows my work as well and then i told him the stories so, but but that was that happened after chapter two and then we started to work in the comics uh, back back then. Mm -hmm. And then like, okay, but if we release uh, the comics, how how can we do that? Just like release comics, uh, like what is what is the connection? Like how, how will people feel if, if just, we just release comics? So I was like, you know, maybe I'm going to work on an EP to release uh, together with the comics. And then uh, there will be music too, you know, because then you release new music, people will be listening to that. And then, okay, there's a story coming with that. So 
I, then I started to work on um, Nights at Lake Milson, and it was supposed to be an EP, as I mentioned before. It was going to have like, I don't know, four songs, or I guess the, the first idea was actually four songs, but then I had five. But then it was like, okay, if I release a vinyl, you know, if you release a vinyl, it will be two songs in one side and three in the other. Oh, that's kind of weird. Let's make it six. So it's like three, three, you know. Yeah. And then I had the, and then I worked on, on the six songs and then I had the alternate version. So it became eight songs, um, eight tracks, you know, six songs, eight tracks, you know. Yeah. So, but then, um, then it became an album, but it was, I started to work on that, uh, that, that album with the comics in my head, you know? So like the, the, the things like the album cover, uh, and you know, like the, the, the sound, uh, the sound of the, you know, the, the music itself, mm -hmm. it happens between chapter one, that is malignant force and chapter two. So like everything you're seeing, like in the, in the cover, you know, and you're listening, Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's supposed to happen between chapter one, that is malignant force, and chapter two, endless nightmare. So like if you if you get to listen to the whole, uh, let's say like oh, I'm gonna listen to the whole Midnight Danger discography, you right. should listen to malignant first, uh, malignant force first, then night at Lake Milson, and then chapter two, endless nightmare. That is uh, the correct <laughs> way wow. to listen to to, to the, the story, you know. Yeah. But uh, so it's like uh night at lake milson it's inside uh the universe of malignant force even if the songs are not exactly in the same uh style they have the same kind of vibe i guess mm. so um, everything happens uh, together there and then i brought these uh, these guest musicians everyone has a different story to be there but mm -hmm. i guess it was um it was really nice to have all of them uh, it made this uh, this album very, you know, very interesting and very complete because you have different people from different generations. If you think about it, it's like four generations of rock and roll in this album. It's like Kane Roberts, who became famous in the 80s. He built his uh, career in the 80s. And then you have uh, Rafael Bittencourt, who is, who is like a guitarist, a Brazilian guitarist that he's famous internationally with his band Angra and like he built this band in the 90s so we have another generation there then you have uh, Martin Sweet and Danny Rexon who started their bands in the 2000s Crazy Licks and Crash Diet they are from the Swedish sleaze scene here oh. and then you have Sonia Nubis that is from uh, he was, she was from uh, Burning Witches and she's from Crypta and Cobra Spell now. And then she started to play in 2010, you know? So it's like four decades that of rock and roll and this EP is a synthwave EP. And I think this makes the work even more interesting. So it's a very complete work in my opinion with, you know, the comics and the, the cover, the whole concept and the guest musicians. And then you have like, as we talked before, the saxophone and the song with vocals, which is different in, in the Midnight Danger work and universe, you know, and then you have different drum machines and stuff like that. So yeah, it was uh, really nice to work on that. And this is, uh, this is how I describe this work, you know, and like just try to give you some background of everything here. Yeah, no, that's that sounds really interesting like i i definitely now i want to listen to it in that order you know malignant force nights at lake milson chapter two endless nightmare i kind of want to go back now and just like sit there and listen to it all the way through and just you know see how that plays out um since you've you've kind of like informed us that that's the way that it should be um i had no idea so now i'll definitely check it out that way <laughs> awesome awesome and and actually, there is more because oh. in um, in the anniversary edition of Malignant Force that that came only on on vinyl, there's uh, five bonus tracks. One is a live uh, version of Adrenaline Burst, but the other four songs are like the singles that I released before Malignant Force. 
and they were but but you know like when when i finished malignant force i i reworked on those songs and uh made like a new mastering a new mix so they sound much better they're like if they are already on on spotify youtube it's like uh evil night and um the last day the dog here sorry <laughs> no you're good <laughs> um so it's like evil night the last day uh darkness approaches and rising those are the four singles i released before malignant force and then i reworked on them to be on malignant force Mm -hmm. But we didn't release them on Malignant Force in the beginning because, you know, like uh, it was already uh, Malignant Force has 11 songs, so it would be 15 songs. You would need like a double vinyl or something. And we were not going to do that back then. We didn't know if, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like mm -hmm. there was no point on releasing like a debut album, like a double album. So, but then in the anniversary edition that came out, recently then i included those four songs so they are also liking this uh, uh malignant force universe nice so like if you have if you have the chance to listen to the four of them as well the the four singles they are also as i said on spotify but not like the reworked versions you know like the previous versions but still count but then you can listen like to malignant force then you listen to these four songs yeah um, the, the the first uh you will find it's like uh if you are on my spotify for example it's like my first two releases are those two singles um so then you listen to those and then um nights at lake milson and chapter two but you can skip them too you know like just 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 if you want to have like the complete thing then you add those those songs between malignant force and nights at lake milson all right. Yeah, I'll have to, I want to check those out as well. So I'll, I'll definitely uh, look for those and um, listen to that in that perpetual order for sure. All right. <laughs> so I know we kind of, we kind of talked about, you know, like what, what your hopes are and what we kind of hope to see in 2022. What's, what do you think is coming up next for you in uh, Midnight Danger? Um. It was, I, I'm putting all my, my hopes and, you know, like all my, my positive thinking about like on playing live again. This is what I want to do. It's, uh, I, I can't wait until it's uh, like, you know, more um, guaranteed that I will be able to plan shows and start playing live, you know, because it's been, um two years and i released two albums and they never they were never played live and mm -hmm. i want to play those albums live like in, in before that i didn't even have a uh, scary g in the band so i wasn't playing with a live drummer before and i never played a live show with the live drummer so this is what i really want to do um not only 2022 i don't know uh if it will be possible i hope so but also like the next couple of years it's what i would say it's not time for chapter three yet you know it's um <laughs> yeah i need to play those shows live live you know like chapter two and i said like milson they, they need to be played live before i release something new you know like i want people to read the comics and to see the other albums live and to see the live sh the, the light show and scary d so whenever that is happening and like enough people have seen it already then okay then i'm i'm gonna work on, on chapter three and uh, it will be a trilogy and then god knows what what will happen after that but the idea is to make a trilogy maybe i will release an ep or something now i have no idea also i want to do like um more music videos. I have no plans to do any music video right now, but at the right time, hopefully soon, I will start planning a new music video and see how that will go. I, I mean, I released like music videos for Nights at Lake Milson. Actually, it's like a one lyric video with uh, the comics, some some of the the comics, and uh, two the the other two music videos are like 
kind of like playthrough videos. It's like only me and Scary D and like the guests playing the song. But I like to do like a story as the other music videos, you know, Endless Nightmare into the Shadows and Back. That is, we have a story going on. It's like a horror short, you know. Mm -hmm. This is what I like to do. And um, so hopefully, like maybe later this year or next year, I will make another one that is kind of a short horror as well. Nice. But my focus is on, on live shows again. This yeah, is, this is what I really want to do, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I, I really hope that we get that chance. And I hope that you're able to start playing again. I mean, I know the, the feeling of missing the stage and missing getting to play your music for, for tons of people. So I, I really hope that 2022 and, and beyond brings that back to you and um, that you keep making this amazing music and playing it live for us. So um, I really do wish you the best and I'm, I'm excited to hear what comes next for you. Thank you so much, man. Fingers crossed about that. I mean, I'm yeah, really, sure. really happy to hear and uh, happy, really happy with the support and fingers crossed. Yeah. Let's, let's hope it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great when it comes to, to live shows and, and stuff, you know. All right. So I think this is where we're going to kind of have our parting words and end the show here. Um, I appreciate your time so much. I'm I'm glad that you came on the show. I hope we can do this again sometime, you know, um, down the road. We can make some time and visit again and um, talk Absolutely. some more. So, um, yeah, guys, um, if you haven't checked out Midnight Ginger, um, I definitely recommend it. Uh, YouTube, Spotify. Are you on Bandcamp or any of those other? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, midnightdanger.bandcamp.com, but... You know, like my albums are actually on New Retro Waves Bandcamp. So like to, to check the album, like you, you're only going to find the four singles in my Bandcamp and like merchandise, like T-shirts and uh, other stuff like uh, patches and uh, pins, stickers. But for the albums, then you have to go to New Retro Waves Bandcamp. All right. Fantastic. Well, you heard the man. Go check him out. Uh, check out all his music, his merch fantastic music if you're into synth if you're into 80s your rock all the all of the above horror definitely give midnight danger a listen um thank you again chris for being on um and i i appreciate it and i uh like i said i hope we get to talk again soon thank you so much yeah absolutely thank you thank you josh and thank you thank you everyone who is watching the the interview is super it was super cool to talk with you and like so many nice things to talk about and we definitely do this in the future awesome i'm so glad to hear it well have a good rest of your day chris <laughs> thanks man you too thank you all right <laughs> bye now <laughs>